joined the police force in the 70s, and she's made with and enemies. When she qualified in the police service, all hell broke loose. Towed away Indira Gandhi's car. That was a bit cheeky, wasn't it? <laughs> all these brave young men noticed there was a braver girl around. And this is dangerous. She is Kiran Bedi. When I changed the face of the prison, they were jealous. When I exposed corruption in the police, I embarrassed them. These are powerful people, and there's a high price for going against them. You know, most of your seniors colleagues would like to see you buried 200 feet below. My enemies would love to see me fail, and instead, I emerged with international acclaim. <laughs> Work has been my priority, and my family just got as much as I thought they needed. This is getting a little too much. It always gets too much for you, but okay. And what were you doing chasing a mob single-handedly in the middle of Delhi? It's very scary. It's very difficult to live with her. Why? What have I done? I don't know. What haven't you done? She's very strong, very naive. She's everything. It's all great. Please welcome Dr. Kiran Bedi. Yes, madam, sir. You know, when we invited us to speak, she said, Firoz, I've come here last year. What do you want me to speak again? And the request from the advisory board was, ma'am, we want to tell your story, your story about your association with inclusion. She has a very touching story about her relationship with her sister. Uh, and her sister was one of the leading doctors in this country. Um, and I think that's the story we said we want her to narrate. The other stories you've heard, there is a movie there, go watch it. But this is a very unique story, I think, the, for the first time being sh told in public. So ma'am, over to you. Yes, it's a very difficult moment. Yeah, thanks. It is a difficult moment. It's a homage to a legend who was um, who's part of our lives, part of our causes, causes which have brought us together. It's amazing Feroz thought of her because Feroz and she met with each other. Uh, for Feroz's family reasons. She almost became the first counselor for Feroz. She was still around then, that is last year. So therefore, I'm bringing to you uh, the story of my sister. She lives in spirit, but I'm going to be her voice right now and show you and share with you what she's left behind for us to carry forward the work um, particularly for me, and that's what brings me to this summit again and again, and for such causes around the country. Um, in fact, she's added more causes to my life's repertoire. I seem to be getting more and more uh, reaching out to disability issues. Even last yesterday, I was in Hyderabad for the same purpose. So here is it. It is with a heavy heart, but I think it's good to know who our, one of our legend was and how much she contributed to make our lives slightly easier. Her name is Rita Peshavria. I too was Kiran Peshavria before I became, and then I became Kiran Bedi. 
but she decided to retain her maiden surname. Mine got lost. <laughs> this is how she looked like when I tell her students, and by the way, the, some of her students are here. Her professors, teachers, colleagues are here because she was also uh, teaching at the National Institute for the Mentally Handicapped in India before she went to London. This is how she looked like, how beautiful she was. That's her husband, Dr. Kirti Menon, who was also the first uh, director of the National Institute for the Mentally Handicapped and did amazing work, groundwork for, in the field of autism and behavioral issues. This is, was her academic profile. I thought I would, it was not easy for me to put it together, but I tried to do my best. From Amritsar, then Guru Nanak Dev for her, then Ranchi, and then special course in instruction rehab, and then her PhD uh, on self injurious behaviors and home based behavioral interventions in people with mental retardation. Then she was a research assistant, and then Chandigarh, and then Imhas, then um, NIM, which is Hyderabad and then lead psych clinical psychologist specialist in learning disability services in the United Kingdom in Hertfordshire partnership. She was also a lecturer in that university. While she was teaching, she was treating. In fact, she was almost plucked out of the National Institute for the Mentally Handicapped as one of India's best. She, she was stagnating there. So was Dr. Menon stagnating there. The institute was about to be upgraded and um, the vice chancellorship should have gone to Dr. Menon. But when they realized that it's now suppressed and a bureaucrat is deciding to take over, they decided to outgrow wherever they were. And they were literally plucked out when they were serving hugely. So they decided to invest in the rest of their lives to grow a little more. They didn't know that life was not going to be so long. In fact, she had plans to return to India after her. In fact, she, the day that she passed away, was the last day of her work at Hertfordshire. Just the last day. This is her, these are her intellectual contributions in the field of autism and intellectual disability. Behavior modification, applied behavior analysis, working with families was of key, which Dr. Dr. Kalam mentioned a lot. Autism spectrum disorders, sensory and perceptual difficulties in persons with autism, intellectual disability, neuro, neurotypicals. I don't even know how to pronounce these. Moving, this was her book, A Moving Forward, an Information Guide for Parents. These are all these things which she, she researched. In fact, this is still very little of what I've been able to, I'm sharing with you, but I realized in 20 years of her career, I don't know, 20 books, so many scales and measurement tools, it seems she, she hardly ever slept. Family needs schedule, family support scales, disability impact scales, family efficacy scales, directory of parents associations working for the welfare. This is very premier. Now this has become a major national body of Parivar. This is a very interesting body. And when she and her husband, Dr. Menon, were forming this, can you believe it? They kept themselves out completely and totally dedicated to the, they never even became founder trustees. They just wrote this and gave it all to them. The questionnaires and behavioral skills for adult living. These are some of the books she did. I couldn't lay hands on the others because they were still in London. I have only included what I had as my own personal library. Books and measurement skills further developed by Rita Prashavri as principal author, as principal author. These are the, the entire list, and these are all the reference books for those who are still in this field and who will continue to be in this field. Develop models for delivery of services. Individual programs for home-based training involved parents while making assessment and demonstrated activities to parents that would be carried out at home, offered at day services in clinic setting, formation of national federation. This is, I'm sorry, this is what I was mentioning. They formed a national federation. I saw her write it 20 years ago, both of them, the husband-wife together, just write it, and I asked her, 
you're founding it. This is a trust. Why don't you include yourself? They said, no, this only belongs to them. Even as advisors, we wouldn't be, they must run it themselves. I think I, yes. Group activities, family cottages. This, you know, this institute was built by them together. It was a symbol of remarkable integrity in governance. Remarkable integrity. It's every, in fact, this was an example of how honesty can build institutions for uh, society. This is what she looked like when she was going through chemo chemo chemotherapy, Dr. Menon. This is when she started being in the, uh, in the wheelchair. These are last, almost her last pictures. We flew her down to Lo from London. She wanted to come home to be with us. This was her last travel to the hospital. That's her son, Kirti Doc uh, Gaurav, who makes chips on the satellites. She's left a very brilliant son behind very value-based family. We were all together in her last days. She's left an amazing rural work behind. This is her, she donated her own land to the rural development where she was waiting to come and do inclusive training at mental retardation programs. But she's left her own land and where with which this, she, we together built this institution which works in the Gurgaon area. Bonsi. This was her prayer at the last Hertfordshire. I think that's the last. Is that? Yes. Yes, I wanted to give you Rita's words. I culled them out from her writings. Family and parents are the most important persons in the lives of persons with intellectual disability which means these are the ones we need to always focus on and work with, train and support. Parents and family members are the most important resources for promoting inclusion in society. Persons with intellectual disability are most sincere and reliable workers in employment situations. They are so true, they're truthful, they're, they're most character-based, they do not know how to cheat, they're so truthful to the annoyance of many, but this is how. I wish we would, employment agencies would know if they want truly reliable people, here they are, the ones with intellectual disability, but skilled in a, in a, in a skill which they would need. You can, for efficiency in production, rely upon workers who are mentally challenged. Persons with ID care, that is intellectual disability, are our best teachers. They teach us honestly, honesty, trust, and friendship. Thank you for seeing my sister here. We are all proud of her as a family, but she's, she is going to be continuing to guide us in one form or the other in the field. We are all in it together. I want to thank Feroz for helping me or presenting Rita to you, the legend who loved doing what we are here together for. Thank you very much.